Azalea. Hello friends. So this week uh, we will be exploring the wide and wonderful world of traditional hanbok vests. Uh, so just going on a little tour of some of the more popular, common, uncommon at different times styles. Uh, we're going to first start off with the bangryang beja. And now bangryang refers to the shape of the collar. Now this was a pretty uncommon shape in the Joseon dynasty. Uh, you see it more nowadays uh, in modern like three-piece sets for weddings. Uh, a lot of Korean garments, their names are referred to by the shape of the collar. So for instance, there is a robe called a jikryongpo, and jikryong means a straight collar. So a lot of garments are classified by the actual shape of the collar piece. Um, moving on is the most, one of the most recent uh, evolutions of Korean hanbok. Um, in the late 19th, early 20th century, when uh, the West was first making their way into Korea, uh, the first in-garment pockets uh, were used for this style of vest called a joki. Now, previously, uh, they would use pouches secured to their belts or carried in hand, uh, but there had not been actual in-garment pockets. So this was quite all the rage in the late Joseon dynasty, where men could put their glasses, put tobacco, all the wonderful things that pockets can do, as we know. Um, so moving on to the longer style vests, uh, this is called a dapo. Uh, now the dapo was first used uh, in the Goryeo dynasty, 918 to 1392. And they were often made from converting old Daryangpo, which is a circular rounded collar full sleeve garment, cutting them down into these vests. Now I've seen instances with either they have a half sleeve like this style, or completely sleeveless um, but I just find it really interesting that they would actually recycle their garments not that they didn't have evidence of that before but that it was such a un, such a common thing for it to evolve into such an iconic piece um, in 1480 King Seongjong uh, and this is a quote from Couture Korea by and I'm sorry for pronunciation Hei Yang Jong Kim Han, once again from the book Couture Korea, um, King Sung Jong ordered that his Daryang be altered into a dapo. The resulting garment was then bestowed upon the winner of a poetry competition amongst his civil officials. This record suggests the flexibility and variation in men's robes during the Joseon dynasty. Now that I just found really profound in terms of, well, whether intentionally made as a dapo vest, a sleeveless garment, that they would be pretty much the same pattern used. So while I was exploring and learning how to make hanbok, that little piece of information was so extremely helpful where I knew, oh, historically, they would just be made from a larger sleeved robe. So all the pattern pieces inside would be the same. Uh, so. Quickly moving on to the last of my examples. Uh, this I have heard referred to by two different names, either by a kweja or a jongbok. Uh, both I've seen used, could be my faulty translation. I know much of the time in terms of the telephone game of romanization of Korean language, um, no one has an agreed upon way of romanized translation so a lot of the names that you'll see may not carry over book to book or writer to writer and they'll refer to things very differently at least in the english language um, but i've heard heard this referred to as both uh, so i'm just going to use the info from both uh, this vest was based off of a qing dynasty vest uh, qing dynasty from china uh, obviously it had no collar attached in the center front by two knot buttons and could flare out on the side. Now this would be worn over 
a military garment called a tolik, like I am wearing right now, with the pleated lower skirt. Um, it was an incredibly popular garment amongst the military, uh, but in 1883, uh, King Gozong uh, passed the Costume Regulation Reform of 1883, and by 1888, so five years later, it was considered almost everyday apparel for all military officials. Uh, so just how seamlessly they can work their way into almost a homogenous style, um, either by just trend or by a reform directly from the king. Uh, now this week we will be making a little short-sleeved doppo vest. I have some really nice green, that jade, celadon, bright green color, uh, some lovely shantung silk. So fingers crossed, this will be an easy project for us. Okay, so I just got done cutting out my pattern pieces. Uh, so I can probably do a little bit more of a breakdown of how I found those next. But I have my back piece and this is measured from base of neck to where ends. I usually like about 125 centimeters long. Uh, sometimes when the silk bolt is like 111 or so, then I'll just go with that. Um, then I have four pieces. These are the front panels. Uh, I have two wider ones that sit closest to the arms. And then the slightly skinnier ones go on the inside. Then we have my collar piece here, which I'll fold over and then attach. This is one of the gorun, which are the little ties that will tie up. So this is the longest one that will attach to the left side of the front that ties over. Then I have the two ties, one on the right side of the vest that ties on the inside. And then from the remaining edge bolt, I have two pieces of about 16 centimeter wide silk, which I'm going to overlay and that will be the secondary long golden tie. Now for Kweja vest, sometimes you can do sleeves, sometimes there aren't. I just sort of look at what's out there and take the average. So here I have about the length of my armhole folded over. So that's about 29 centimeters. So I just double that and then this is the width of how long it's going to come down on the cuff of the arm. So I have left arm, right arm. So this I think was about two and a half yards. I took the last of the bolt, which I always end up doing. Um, but just a little picture of how little is not used. So I have a little strip here and then a little strip at the very end. Where are you? This one, this bit, and that. And those are my leftover scraps from the outer shell. Now get on to cutting the lining. We are in day two. Uh, we cut out the pattern pieces. So from the last little touch upon, um, I remembered that I completely forgot about the side uh, gussets on either side and the back part. So unfortunately I used up my silk uh, that green silk. So luckily there was some matching blue and gold brocade. So 
what we have here. Um, now it's common uh, with Humboldt if you're using two different kinds of fabric. One will be the larger collar called the Git collar and then usually the Gorum ties and then I have to look up the Korean name for these side gussets or these triangles. So thankfully a uh, lovely Asian American artist Kim Sandara uh, gifted me this beautiful brocade fabric from a store in Brooklyn. I'll have to get the name again. Um, but these will be paired up to make up for the lacking fabric of the green silk. Shantung, Dupioni, something, I don't know. I'm a gay man, you say silk and I say yes. So I'll have to get down and watch probably Nicole's videos again on silk and just really figure out exactly what I've got going here. Um, but to make up for my losses, brocade with this. I initially had another green uh, for some lining, but once I figured I will do side gussets, the innermost panels and the collar in this brocade. So next step, we will just do basic sew lining to outside panels and I will touch back in after that. So you can either do like the proper, make two copies and fold it and stitch it together for the lining, or you can do like the cut two pattern pieces of the same and then just flip it. I know I've seen lots of people use different things. Um, I got a stick, a legitimate dowel rod. Um, some fabrics, of course, I'm not really wanting to do this, but since it's like on average over 100 centimeters in length, I'd rather just do this. And have everything flipped. Well, that's usually really not too bad of a combination. I'm usually not one too much for brocade because of the fallout of gold threads everywhere. Um, actually, I really, really, really like this combination. Just a little pop when I've been going straight solids forever. But now on to pressing and ironing. Okay, so this is editing me from the future quickly. Uh, just thought I'd give a quick little um, diagram showing. Uh, so I don't really use patterns. Um, I remember my measurements from what I need for different lengths and sort of go from the rectangles of it all, uh, which I have found through later research is fairly accurate. Um, obviously, historically, bolts would have been slimmer, so you would have done things longer ways, but a lot of the measurements and patterns are influenced by historical bolt width, which is common throughout the world. Um, so we have our back piece, the dwitgil, to apgil, and to sop. These are the four panels that make up the front. And I have two long and two shorter gorum, which are the sash ties, to some, which is uh, the sleeves, but for this, it's those little half sleeves. I'm probably going to guess there is a different word. Some refers to uh, the Korean word for sleeve as a full iteration. Um, now this is that sort of really nice green silk. Um, I did cut a lining of another darker green sort of olive. Doesn't really match, but I don't care. Uh, the back piece and two wider front panels. And then down here is my quick little diagram of what I cut from the blue and gold floral brocade. Um, that includes the side triangular gussets, two new salt pieces so I will use these from the green as lining for this and another cut of a get the wider collar piece and I'll use this green silk one to layer on top um, now in terms of putting these together um, just a quick these are the two apgil to salt 
right along and then the wearer's right side is a little triangled out so it's the full expanse of the salt on the bottom and then sort of angles upwards. Uh, the get collar being the last, the shoulder seam, and then our two some with the triangular gussets on the back. Now your gwiku, uh, you will also see commonly a seam straight down the back. So I'm gonna guess that is in relation to the bolt width, where you just wouldn't have had such wide fabric here. Um, so, I mean, disclaimer, like many, um, this isn't exactly a sewing uh, tutorial. Uh, this is just sort of what I've learned how to do, and I mean, people seem appreciative of what my homebook looks like, so thankfully it can't be that too off course. Um, so this is just sort of my way of learning of how I figure things out. Obviously, I have much more to learn and will endeavor to learn proper techniques, um, but some things I have found I have been doing right, luckily. Fantastic. So back to the video. We are stitched together our three main body pieces. We have collar and sleeves over in that little pile underneath the table. So we have apki and sop, which are the inner. Apki and sop. I haven't found the name, the Korean name of what the side gussets are. Uh, some garments have them, some do not. Uh, like on the pleated uh, military tautics, those obviously, since they're pleated, skirts there's no such need um but for these these are both on the back and then on the front sides so salt up gear and we have git collar and dung jung which is the white little bit of collar that will be sort of the finishing touch so now i am going to sew together the tops of the back piece to the tops of the front pieces. And I do that about 15 centimeters in. And then we'll fold down these sections for when the collar comes in. Okay, so now we are joining up the side gussets. Uh, right now I've already pinned it um, I'm changing it up a little bit. I want these to overlap a little bit. Usually they'd be like specific triangles, so like really to a point, but um, I'm not that good quite yet and I'm lazy. Uh, so I make a little bit wider. Uh, what I could do, like for instance with this, these are the side gussets. I could just do a simple attach together stitch down and then open it up but since the brocade it's not bending like i want it to i'm just going to overlap so the front panels overlaps just a teeny bit just enough for security down and i'm doing about 20 centimeters from underarm down so that's enough i feel for how I need it for security, and then the rest will be open, flappable space. Here we have our collar. So this is the inside of the collar. Um, here is outside. This is hanging down the right, and this is going to be the rounded left side, the one that shows to the public when everything is closed. So it's a little rounded edge. Then we have the green, I'll tuck that in, shame. Um, everything has been stitched and then flipped. And then this is the white paper Dongjiang color. Uh, it, traditionally it would have been made out of uh, Hanji, uh, Korean mulberry paper. And these can easily be taken off, replaced, 
um, you'd use like a looser stitch, but I machine because I'm a monster and I need sturdiness uh, for daily wear and tear. So it's a quick stitch on the inside of the collar. Oh, goodness. And then you fold over and then you do the tiniest of hidden, blind, whatever kind of you call it stitch that way. So I'll have the three colorations on this collar. And then I hand stitch down this bit, which has just been folded under like so. We have our finished doppel robe. We have our ties, our little sleeves. I'll have to figure out how to get wax out of silk. I mean, I'm sure it's a common historical problem, right? Uh, we have our slightly overlapped side gussets here. A little flare open right underneath there. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And at least the silk is really nice and light, so hopefully it won't be a solely fall and winter vest. Because that'd be a nice way to add a pop of brocade into the summer. So I am so, so, so pleased with this Davo. I mean, despite uh, the little detours and road bumps along the way, um, very pleased to have yet another lovely addition to the Celadon Jade Summer we have been rocking so far. Um, so thank you again for joining me on uh, my burgeoning YouTube stumbling steps. Um, remember, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. Um, hesitantly planning on like a once a week uh, upload. I mean, we'll see. Uh, but thank you guys for joining me on my little adventure and Hope to see y'all soon. Thank you. Anya.